just a bit foggy this morning. Morning guys. Well, fingers crossed that everything goes as smooth as possible getting this wheat top dressed today and that we can get some seed moved out the door. So pretty much the whole morning, Dad and I have been working on laying out the plumbing for the three inch pump all here. And then we also uh, pulled off the two inch pump off the tanker and we're kind of mapping that all out for that. And we've got a box of stuff there that actually we got to send back and also uh, a whole list of stuff that we need to order for not only the two inch pump, but for the three inch pump because I wanted to make a couple of changes to how dad plumbed it. There's a neighboring rep sometime this afternoon coming over to swap seed with us, uh, 688. So, uh, right now I'm going to try and find what we're going to give him and get that all set up and ready to go because this afternoon we are going to be busy uh, working on trying to get that wheat top dressed. So once I find that, I will work on getting this seed laid out for him. Well, that was pretty simple. I actually already had uh, all of it but two bags stacked together, so I just had to pull two bags off of that other skid and flip that over because that's different seed size and plus we didn't want to put two bags on another pallet. So, well, that's all ready to go. Now we just wait for our neighbor to get ready for uh, top dressing for this afternoon. We'll call Co Alliance and get them coming over because we don't have a tender right now. Uh, and also mainly because uh, we pulled that pump off the tanker and we didn't want to use the tanker either. So uh, we're just going to have co-lines bring it out in two separate loads and get the wheat top dressed this afternoon.
because there is a church there and there is a church right across the road over there. And that green patch that you see behind us, that is a about three, three and a half acre dry corner on this field and it's literally on a sand hill. And that is one of the uh, fields that we put, ended up putting in the alfalfa last year that I ended up drilling uh, with the 730 and a neighbor's drill. And it actually looks really, really good. Um, I believe we put down 18, uh, 19 pounds to the acre on the alfalfa. Offhand, it was a 55Q number from Pioneer. I can't remember the exact number. I just remember, I believe it was 55Q something. Um, we're just gonna end up keeping that in the alfalfa for the remaining period of time for the life of the alfalfa and cycle it out when we need to. And the neighbor will end up doing the alfalfa. We won't be messing with the alfalfa then. A lot of you guys probably remember uh, that the Twin Churches field was supposed to go into tomatoes, so why am I working with the vertical till? Well, we don't know for sure if they're going to be taking this or not. They've given us the word of mouth that they want it, but we haven't really sat down and discussed it since then. So just to be on the safe side, since they're going to work this field anyways, so just in case if they do not decide to take it, we're going to go ahead and run the vertical till uh, again because they're going to work this if they do take it for tomatoes. But if they don't take it, we'll already have it ready for corn. And besides, the porter field actually is going to need to be hit. That is the field in question today, uh, because usually if it doesn't have cover crop on it, we like to hit it again with the vertical till before planting, whether that be now or uh, right before we plant. So if we do uh, decide to end up planting this field to corn, this field will have to be hit again uh, before planting it sometime. If you don't remember exactly how many acres of alfalfa we have, we have about 26 acres between all the patches that we put in. This dry corner, a field over by our house, and a patch over by the farm, which amounts to about five acres. And all those fields or patches will be done uh, with a neighbor that we partnered with on this. He has a need for the alfalfa and is going to end up running those fields from us and is going to basically do everything needed for the alfalfa because for us we do not know too much about alfalfa so and plus we do not have the equipment uh, needed to do anything with the alfalfa so a neighbor is going to be handling all that and taking care of all of that for us the reason why we put these fields in the alfalfa is because economically it makes sense because these fields do not uh, produce enough to make crop production worthwhile and plus it's just added wear and tear in the equipment if you're not going to make any money on those patches so our theory is is that since alfalfa has a lot of biological benefits to the soil that the alfalfa is going to better the soil and hopefully make those patches yield slightly better if not overall better when it comes time to rotate those out of alfalfa and eventually farm those once again and plus uh, we are heavily uh, dependent on rainfall and especially without these uh, patches getting hit with the irrigator at all. It is very, very critical that uh, we get adequate rainfall throughout the year in order to make up for not having an irrigator on these fields. Well, I guess he's just going to have to uh, plant beans there because no, I'm not putting the border there. Dad's over here in the 4430. He's working on trying to fill in that wet hole right there that the guys that we rented to the tomatoes to uh, got stuck in that spot. We don't really know how, but they ended up getting stuck and they ended up making a wet hole there. So he's over there taking dirt off the ditch bank trying to essentially alleviate that hole and that way we don't have any issues.
Derek Horn doesn't cut it. I mean, I, I can't believe... Wow, I can't believe he would have the balls to do that. I imagine they're in a pinch right now. They want to move, move inventory and... Too bad. That's ridiculous. I... Wow. I, I would take that used one down at Castonia's before that. Wow. Well, I've been talking with Dad here off and on on the phone, and it sounds like he's almost done with that wet spot over there, filling that in with the loader. And it is currently 11:35, and I guess he's going to call Grandpa or Amanda to uh, see about having one of them come and pick us up and take us back to the farm and get some lunch and. Uh, come back over here and he'll finish up uh, what's left to do with that wet hole and really I only got about maybe 15 acres left over in this field and possibly depending on what we decide to do work that 60 acre quarter field uh, if not I'll uh, head down to grandma's and do that 15 acres uh, what we call the T-bridge down there those of you that don't know, I do have a younger sister that is uh, who Amanda is, and she's 17 years old and uh, goes to South Central. South Central is actually closed now through the remaining through the remaining part of the year. Now uh, they were closed till April 12th due to coronavirus, and now uh, they are closed to throughout the end of the year now. So. She's been doing the e-learning day stuff uh, in the office in there, and so she's been helping us out on the farm and doing some stuff. <laughs> well, it looks like Amanda's the lucky one here to come and pick us up. Well, I guess I will catch you guys after lunch. Well, while we were gone, uh, FedEx came and dropped off some plot seed, so I had to unload that, and we are checking on some alfalfa seed, because speaking of alfalfa earlier, uh, a guy messaged me, a friend of mine actually, and said that uh, he's got a friend that needs 750 pounds of alfalfa, which is about uh, 15 bags of alfalfa, so we're checking the seed. Uh, if anything is available because supply on alfalfa is cut pretty short this year.
about two inches. Hair deeper. Okay, because I did shallow it up a turn when uh, I moved out before I uh, started today. Yeah, I'm just running seven out here. Well, we decided that we're gonna go ahead and work this. There's about 60 acres out in this quarter field. This will be the second time running it. We're gonna run it straight. I already worked it on an angle last fall on about a five degree angle. I'm gonna run it straight. Run about seven, seven two, and uh, set it a quarter inch deeper to try and bury just a tad bit more residue out here. Break it up a little bit more. So I'm running about two and a quarter inches. And yeah, so that's what's going on. I guess uh, Krampa drove up to go see what that woods looks like. And uh, the wind's out of the south and it's just blazing right through that woods. There's at least four fire departments there trying to put the thing out. That's crazy. He just says it's a complete fiasco up there with them trying to get the woods out. So I just was on Facebook seeing the latest status update on the coronavirus and Governor Holcomb, the governor of Indiana, has just uh, released today new restrictions and a restriction task force on uh, restricting people uh, who are out and about uh, during the stay-at-home order and uh, basically if you are caught outside out and about uh, during the stay-at-home order and you are not an essential worker or have a valid reason why you are out and about uh, you can get fined a thousand up to a thousand dollars and uh, be sent to jail for 180 days this is the world we live in, people. This is, this is crazy. Absolutely crazy. Also did find out on the alfalfa, uh, we do have alfalfa available, I guess. And we contacted our uh, supply person and they said we shouldn't have a problem getting alfalfa for what we need. And uh, just basically waiting on an answer back for my friend to find out if his friend is still needing that alfalfa or not, and if so, we're gonna hopefully try and get that for him. out chisel plowing. Just about done with that field actually. There's quite a few guys that have actually started planting at least three farms that I know of. One I know of has over 400 acres of beans in the ground, none of which have run any corn I don't believe unless uh, they've done some today, which I'd be very surprised, but then again I wouldn't be surprised on some of them. We ourselves do not plan on planting anytime soon, not for the next couple of weeks yet. The 
15 day forecast shows 30s and 40s with rain just about every single day or just a chance of rain every single day and in my opinion that is not ideal seedbed conditions so personally I'm pretty glad that we do not have anything planted but that's just me so we plan on planting sometime around the uh, 18th of April, 20th of April. We're going to start with beans first and do those two uh, soybean field trials in 30 inch rows and then switch over to uh, corn nut. So swap the feed meters out on the planter for corn meters and uh, also uh, the remaining of the, the remaining uh, bean fields then will all be drilled with the drill with the seven and a half inch spacing like what we normally do, so nothing special. Quite a bit of anhydrous has been run in the past week, along with quite a bit of guys getting out and about starting to do things in the field like what I've been doing, but a lot more extensive with uh, fuel cultivator chisel plowing. And uh, a few guys that I saw today, one uh, I was working over at Shins, went by with a couple sprayers and are already starting to do burn down and pretty much passes.